I think my best race certainly was the Mille Miglia. Going a thousand miles on the Italian roads, which weren't closed. I mean, trucks were out there, medical vehicles, and you know, all sorts of and people moving around to get different viewpoints. And uh, I got this guy, Dennis Jenkinson, my navigator, because there's no way was I going to learn a thousand miles. And we made this incredible thing, which we called a toilet roll. He read that, interpreted that, and did hand signals, which of course I could see out of the corner of my eye. And that's how it happened. I mean, he was like a guide dog, you know? I knew Jake's fairly well because every, I used to race 500cc Formula 3 cars then, and invariably with those with the motorbikes. You know, they run conjunction. Therefore, I saw him most weekends, you know, shells, he went, you know, different places we go to. And uh, Jinx was as a character as anybody, anybody who's met him will know. And he always had interesting and amusing things to say. And he was a person that, that I, I, I found a great affinity. We had a, a lot in common and enjoyed, I think, hopefully, each other's company. He understood the importance of... of of controlling himself and not not, not uh, getting uh, nervous. I mean, it seems to me uh, his threshold of fear was was way longer than mine, you know. And he he would sit there and give me give me give me details he'd taken down uh, correctly. And uh, I mean, we had a couple couple of small mistakes, but really, when you consider the enormity of the problem, a thousand miles going round here with, we were doing. I mean, the SLR. I just think we're doing over 180 miles an hour, which was damn fast. Um, I mean, he was, he was difficult, I'm difficult, and, and I think we accepted each other's shortcomings and got on with it, really. He's the sort of person, if you knew him, uh, you either clicked and you really enjoyed his company, and, uh, which I did, uh, or, or you probably thought, God, he's a bit of a, you know, a wanker, but, um, he, but he always, he's all, always got something interesting and pithy to say. The concentration for 10 hours, how do you keep that level of concentration up? Uh, I think the easiest way, frankly, is to realise that if you make a mistake, you could die. And that gets your attention, if you know what I mean. And, I mean, there's, there were certain places I, that I knew, I knew little bits of places here and there, but I took his signals as, as being gospel. I mean, if he says flat out, flat out. If he said back off, you know, or slow down a bit, or I had to interpret them. But my interpretation and his, his hand signals were fairly closely related. And, you know, when, when he gave me a, a, like that, which was me a bit slower, I'd back off a bit and, and then put my foot down. So, and so I was guided by him. I, I've often thought, I wonder what time I could have done without him. I mean, it would have been a lot, lot slower. Because when you're going up long, fast hills and you, you, don't, you want to know which way the thing, go, which way the road goes. And Jinx, I get a thing either like, it's like this or it'd be like that and, this, and to the right. So I, he was giving me signals which we manufactured between ourselves somehow.